hello guys hello people welcome back to my youtube channel now what are my people na nigeria mata will carry come again no na kidnap na you going to rain for nigeria make everybody just be careful this video one won't show na so this one happen for a do state for Benio. This will go tell now what they see for kidnapping hand though. And the one thing I notice for the matter be saying, if need time, that kind of night, that this will they come out too. I bet if you know, see they live for Nigeria. Make when they come out so early in the morning, do what you want to make when they enter on a house quick. Because the way this kidnapping they go, eh? Now God, now they help people. I beg my people, if you're the first time when they come across my video, if they watch my video before you never subscribe, I beg follow me, hit that button when you say subscribe. If you don't subscribe already, I say thank you, God, God bless you for me. I beg for now, watch this video for me, what is people talk, make when they try to leave when I come for the comment section. I beg, make when I share this video with me for go around, people forget the experience. May they foresee no that happen for our border in Nigeria. Say our border in Nigeria are not this safe. And as all of them know, our government don't do anything to help. Now only one will they protect ourselves. I go see you again for my next video. I beg, make when I share this video. Make when I listen to these people, which they talk with the way God they help them and save them. Thank you guys. God bless them. Bye. Kindly introduce yourself. Um, my name is Efosa Robosa Jaffet. I'm popularly known as Young Elder GCFRO. I'm a comedian and a video creator. Tell us about your experience with the kidnappers along the Benin Auchi Express Road. Okay, um, on the 21st of May, May 2021, I was being to perform in a show in Ekuma um, in Club Pyramids. Sounds, that's the name, so I can't really remember the name of the club right about now. Um, I was being to perform there alongside some of other of my colleagues. So that fateful day, I actually was recording and uh, a friend of mine who is also an actress in the um, entertainment industry, like skit makers, um, she called me that um, for an, an assistant that she was going to uh, Ekuma. That is AAU Abusali University because she actually sh she's a new student there, uh, freshers. So um, she called for her sister, and luckily we were both um, going the same direction. I was going to that direction that particular day, of which um, I rendered an assistant. So around um, four, myself and my driver, is a cabman, Mr. Tommy. Um, we back on the journey, picked up Miracle Agbe along the road as we were heading towards the location of the event. So we left Benin around um, half to four, yeah, about. We left Benin as, as at that time. So we embarked on the journey just immediately after the um, military checkpoint when you pass this Ayelala building along that Benin Auchi Expressway just between there and that Jehovah Witness and, and Kingdom Hall of Jehovah Witness, that's their, their building, their secretariat there. Just immediately we pass that Ayelala, we pass a military checkpoint, not up to five minutes of passing that checkpoint. A man jumped out from the road, I mean from the bush, and right in front of us started shooting up and down. Right. Immediately, my driver just put the car on, on brake and reversed back. So when my driver was revising, you know, because of the orientation I've gotten about kidnappers and how they operate, um, I quickly beckoned on him that since these guys are not shooting at all, it means that they want to lure us to the trap at the back of which when immediately my driver turned the steering to face back heading to Benin, we saw more than five of them heavily armed um, bandits. They, they were shooting, also stopping other cars. So it was as if we were in a circle, like we, they, they were trying to put us all in a circle. So immediately my driver stopped the car and just asked us to start running. So Miracle Agbe was at the back seat, I was at the front seat, and there go my driver. So when he opened the 
the car, I opened my car. The last I saw of Miracle I be was that she opened her own door. So we ran, they were coming from the right hand side of the bush. We ran to the left hand side of the bush. So they started shooting, following us. They were shouting, if you run, I will shoot you. If you run, I will shoot you. So we just kept running. I tried to climb here at first. I fell down, hitting my chest on the ground. Continue running as fast as my leg can carry me. We were running, running for about 15 to 20 minutes deep inside the bush. We later stopped hearing about the gunshots, so we decided to hide inside the bush. When we hide inside the bush, we come across a fellow, a young guy also. Blood was gushing out from his nose. Um, I didn't get his name after this was incident. Blood was just gushing out from his nose, coming out. We were still trying to run at us at that time. And my driver was like, this guy is going to collapse if you continue running inside the bush. So we decided to pick a place, we pull off our clothes, to pick a place to hide. So um, 30 minutes time after hiding, we decided to try to come outside because it was around to cease. When I think to cease, this whole incident happened around after after four along the Benin and Alchi Expressway, but we were inside the bush till about around to six. So we try our best to start coming outside. We had the first step, which we believe was um, kidnapper, because there's no living human being that will be walking in that bush apart from them. They were just speaking, yeah, the kind of dialect they were speaking was more like the dialect of, you know, when, you know, the way this, um, it's men normally talk. Those guys that we call Malada, a Scott Cow, the making all those kind of sound of that's how they were just speaking and speaking and so we immediately decided to fall back flat, pulling our clothes for us not to be noticed because some of us were putting on three of us we were inside that bush. Um, I think that particular guy that his nose was bleeding was um, putting on white. Then Myself, purple native, then Mr. Tommy the cabman was putting on stripes clothes with you know, bright colors in general. So we again decided to lie down flat. So we later started hearing siren of the police. Started hearing the siren of the police. So we decided to start tracing the siren of the police and gradually, gradually we came out from the bush. When we came outside, I, I discovered that it was not just a vehicle and the bus that I had first that I saw. It was about two buses, one Sienna and a Corolla and another you know, a mini van that was involved, of which all the occupants of the vehicle was captured alongside my friend Miracle Aigbe. And but they, they, they left the drivers of the buses. They didn't touch the drivers. They just only, you know, collected the passengers. So we started calling for help because that area, there was no network. The police took us to a you know, police station where we wrote statements and I pleaded with the police to help me go back to the bush that they might not have gone far to try to search for my friends. We, we tried. Unfortunately, the police, they were not having a, enough um, ammunition because um, they said that was the second time the bandit was coming out that same day, that they exchanged gunfire before. And they didn't succeed. They thought maybe they went back. So coming outside, we met the police, the vigilante, the um, military officers outside there. So they, for fear of this whole scenario, I couldn't continue my journey. I had to be taken back to Benin and via their escort, of which they escorted me back to Benin. So when I got to Benin, um, the family of Miracle Aigbe called me that their daughter was abducted and that um, and they've called and they, they go and make their demand the next day, being Saturday. 
I my phone, my Samsung phone, Android phone got blind. So I the next day I quickly rushed to go and fix it. I fixed the Android phone. I even called some of my colleagues in the industry and I fixed the Android phone. Then I discovered that even that particular night, they already tried to reach me via Miracle Igbe's number, the kidnappers. So I kept on trying the number. I kept on trying the number and suddenly the number called me. The number was not reachable, but the number called me and the miracle voice was the voice I had and she was crying and crying. So I told her to give the phone to the kidnappers. We spoke. They demanded for 35 million naira as ransom. I I seriously obviously don't have 35 million naira. So I immediately went to the family to tell the family this is what is going on. The family said, how are we going to get the money? We started calling friends. A friend of Miracle also was contacted. And one Ernest was contacted. So he was the one talking to the kidnapper for before the kidnapper decided to start talking to me. Long story short, on the on Sunday, they called again and made a demand of five million naira. Since we cannot raise 35 million naira, that it has to be five million naira. They called more than three times that particular Sunday. I was at home trying to gather what I can gather. Um, a colleague of mine, MC Edo Pekin, was very, very helpful. From that Friday, he has been calling. Porcupine was also calling, you know, trying to see what we can do. So we tried to raise money for the release of uh, Miracle Igbe. So that Sunday night, they called and asked me if I'd be able to raise the five million naira. I told them I'd only be able to raise 520, that I can be able to raise um, a million naira before the next day. And they said they gave me from that Sunday to, to Monday afternoon by 12 noon that if I'm unable to raise that money, I should just take that money that is with me to go and use to prepare for the burial of my friend. That they don't want to hear anything one millionaire from me anymore. That they will be calling the next day on Monday. So that very Sunday night, started calling my fathers in the Lord. Um, praying, did an all night in my house, alongside with my, my, my crew members, um, my fiancé also, I was just praying all through the night, my pastor, Pastor Is Ujikiri, who happens not to be in the country at the time of this incident, was also praying, and one of the prayer we were praying that God should any negative atmosphere around Miracle Agbe, any negative voice that is speaking against our life, that is trying to take our life, should be destroyed. And God should make our demand met. So at the end of the day, on Monday morning, heading towards the station to go and make report, they called. When they called, they said, okay, where is the five million? I hope I'll be able to raise it. So I told them that, I'm even heading to my way to raise the money that would make it one million naira that I don't have five million naira. That's okay, make it 1.5. I reiterated that it is one million naira that I have. I was pleading, I was begging with them. After everything, the, the, the person that I was speaking to the other side said, okay, go and arrange it. And he ended the phone. So we were able to raise the money. Long story short, we paid the ransom and the way we paid the ransom was um, they called me and gave me a phone number and an account number that I will pay into then I should call the phone number and when I call the phone number it happens to be one of the victim's brother that was even instructed to collect money from other victims that is in their um, den. So at the end of the day, we paid into the account around six, seven o'clock in the evening. Still trying to raise money, even when they ask us to, you know, send the money, we're still trying to raise the money. But long story short, we paid around six, seven, thereabouts. 
That same day at about 10 o'clock, I got a call from Miracle that she has been released. And I thank God. Um, I asked her where she was and all that. We were able to direct her. I was at the Stacey ID where they brought her to me. And that's how we reunited that particular day. Now, the reason why I'm narrating all these things is um, so that um, some of us, fat Nigerians, should be aware of what is happening in, in Edo states. Edo state has become the den of kidnappers, especially that Binyamchi Expressway. When I was in that police station making my report, different report was coming in. That's a week we were um, ambushed. That's a week on Wednesday of it, we kidnapped some persons. On Friday was the incident that um, involved me. Then on Saturday was the same. They still kidnapped in that room. On Monday, when they released Miracle ID, they were actually also kidnapped in that same room. Nigerians, we have to call on the government to de- do the needful. My advice to people traveling, especially students, since that rule leads to ever busy Ambrosalim University and um, Al Chipoli and other schools in that road, my advice to the students and people that are applying that road is to not travel during the weekend because weekends are mostly the time they usually perpetrate their their havoc but if you must travel travel when it is daytime around maybe 10 to 3. once it's past that time do not travel because at the end of the day immediately the police i don't know if they close their checkpoints immediately they leave their checkpoint that is when they normally carry out their havoc Big thank you to everybody that played their parts in ensuring the release of my friend Miracle ID from my colleague MC Edo Pekin, um, Porcupine, MC Casino, my friend Comrade, um, my pastor, um, Pastor Oiz Ojekiri, um, my spiritual father. I, I want to say thank you very much for those that called all the fans on, on Instagram, Facebook, people that were calling, people that were praying, um, even received a text message from uh, Apostle John C. Suleiman that also joined us in prayer. And in fact, I want to say a big thank you to you people and for the prayers. I might not be able to mention everybody's name, but know that I am grateful. Myself, the family of Miracle Aigbe, we are grateful. And of course, Miracle will definitely just see what she saw in the den. Wow, that's really something. Um, we noticed that there's a bandage um, around your leg. Can you tell us about you know the injuries you mm-hmm. sustained? Well, um, we, I'm, I'm smiling right now because I'm thanking God it's just a little injury I sustained. This injury was sustained as a result of when I was running inside the bush, falling and rising inside the bush. Uh, we were crawling for a very long time, myself and, um, and my driver and the other guy. We crawled inside the bush for a long time for us not to be noticed inside the bush. So that's how I sustained this injury and some other injury in my back you know, because of the elephant grass and the rest. But not compared to the horror we saw, and since on Friday till now, I've not been able to close my eyes to sleep as a result of the horror. I'm feeling not secure. I've not been able to even continue my normal business. Um, but hopefully, with time, we will come back strong. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Thank you. Oh my God. How are you doing? I'm fine. It's okay. Can you introduce yourself? Okay, my name is Miracle Esosaegbe. Um, I'm an actress. I'm also a student of Abuja University. Okay. Um, so we just finished um, speaking with Young Elder. 
and he narrated his experience to us. So we would just um, like to also hear from you. Tell us about your experience, you know, about the kidnapping along the Alchi Express Road. Okay, so um, during the time, like when we were traveling, during the robbery or the kidnapping, so I myself, I tried running. And the next thing I saw was someone eating with a gun on my head and I passed out. Then I woke up and saw myself in the bush. I was crying. And I asked him, like, what am I doing here? He told me I've been kidnapped and um, I needed to pay 35 million naira for my release. So I started crying. I told him, ah, I don't have that kind of money. My family, they are not wealthy, they're not even rich. So how am I supposed to have that kind of money? I don't think he even heard that, so he started slapping me, stuff like that. Then we were still in the bush waiting for like eight or nine, so we can cross the other side of the bush where there are people. So I think when it was nine, eight thirty, we crossed to the other side to meet about fourteen other people who they kidnapped from other places. I told them I needed water and they told me that they would take me to one river or Deruba to get us water. At first, I was like, I can't drink um, dirty water. I said it's not dirty. That they would take me to one river bank and drink clean water. So we went there. They gave me this um, trauma door to take. I told them I, don't, I can't take it. That I'm okay. They actually tried forcing me to take it. I told them I don't take trauma door. They gave me weed. I told them I can't take weed. So they said, okay, they, they tied their hands and started, started working. Um, I think that was past 10. We were working. I was still with my watch then. I was checking the time. We worked, 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 worked for at least 2 a.m. the next morning. We were all crying. Like, we were begging, sir, please, can we crawl? Like, our legs, we, were, we, couldn't, we couldn't walk anymore. We were crying. So please, they just crawl. Said no. So we started walking. Um, I think that's it too. Someone tried to run. We are 15 in number. So one man tried to run and he shot him instantly. Like this. Uh. So they shot him and we are 14. We started walking. And eventually we got to one bush, one active bush. We slept there. Um, I think it was Saturday morning. Police came to invade the bush where we were. So we started shooting, exchanging guns, and they saved two guys there. And then in 24, I can't have I think 12 or 13, they bad. So the punishment was even severe because policemen came to provoke them. And according to them, they said, I wish a bullet hit one of them, all of us are dead. So we were crying, begging throughout that day. So I think that moment, they had another plan to leave that bush to the next, um, to the next place. So we had, we had to cross. So we waited for at least 12 midnight okay, when the vehicle went there. So we crossed. And as soon as we were crossing, police were just coming and they had to beat us mercilessly to like hey come down come down come down so stuff like that then we went to the other bush i think it was sunday we started calling our family telling them to pay so from 36 million we said 10 million from 10 million we said 5 million meanwhile i've been calling my friend young Edda. i've been calling one on that guy one of my friend and ns i've been calling my sister i've been begging them to please help me because I, if anyone even told me I would see the next day, I wouldn't believe. Ah, come on, I wouldn't believe. So they, they called, that was a Sunday, they called Younger Da. They told me, Younger Da said he was having, I think, 500 kilos, 500 or something, and they were pissed. They said they're looking for 5 million and it's called it change. So I think that evening, they, um, okay, that evening, we <laughs> okay. so that that evening they went to one bush, one pineapple bush. We tried to take some pineapples because we are very hungry. 
in the meeting, they didn't allow six of pineapple. So it was one of them that even took um, went to the pineapple farm to cut like I think two or three to give us to eat them. And they were yeah, calling our people. So they called mine, they told him 1.5 million naira. And at that moment, he had only one million naira. So the way they did this was that the they had one we, uh, one of us. His brother was actually at Uruguay looking for money. He had four million naira with him. So we actually transferred our money to his own account. Then he's supposed to bring the money to the kidnappers. So we did it that way. We had the bush team nine. They went to the road to take the money. And he came back and they said we should get all still beating that day before they freed us. Then they showed us one path that leads to road. The road, where we came out from the road, they are selling share with that road. I don't really know the road, but it's along that um, Binia Uchi Express Road. So we came out from there. When we came out, some people were running. They were like, stop, oh, they kidnapped us. Oh. So we are looking for um, this vehicle that will take us to Bini. So the man in question that actually bought the money for them, his brother, so he came with his vehicle, he took some of us to Benin where we were there. Then he came with other vehicle to take the rest of us. So as soon as we got released, we actually sent the one million to them. So as soon as we got released, I went straight to state CID to put down my crisis. It must have been a tough experience for you. So can you just tell us exactly how you're feeling right now, like since after the experience, the aftermath? Okay, I I'll be crying though. <laughs> oh, more. I can't even express how I feel though. I, I think maybe being here I might I might be acting strong or whatsoever, but it's not easy. Like yesterday I even had to go to the um, hospital to take sleeping drops to sleep. So because me being alone, I can't even stay being alone. Ah, I can't. So the experience is is tragic. It's tragic. And I, I don't even think I even want anybody to experience that kind of thing. I just want to thank some persons or everybody who helped me out, who wants to pray for me. Um official Rocky Payne, he was one who handled my hospital bill. I want to give thanks to MC Casino, MC Edo Pikini, and Porcupine, Vivian House, Eduardo, Ines, everybody. I just want to give thanks to you all for not allowing me to die in that dead place. And um, I also just want to thank your leader. Uh, God. God will bless you for you. I swear. That guy really did a great job. Like, thank you so, 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 so 